Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for your company today. It's always lovely to spend time with you. I thought today, our little crafty catch-up, we'd make another Christmas card. I hope you don't mind. Um, it's just, I think there's something nice about making Christmas cards. I promise I'll move on to something um, a bit different soon. But the thing is, I just really fancied making this design. And I've got to be honest, the whole premise of it was I bought these gorgeous little um, decorative wreaths, the um, tree decorations, I think. And I was looking for a door and I thought, you know what? This beautiful forest temple, Lavinia door is perfect. And I just think it's something a bit different. And you know what? I had great fun creating it. So I hope you'll uh, indulge me and join me. So if you want to maybe get yourself a nice festive brew, and what about a mince pie? I must admit, I've not had um, a mince pie yet this year. I'm, I'm holding off. Have you had one? Or what do you have? What's your favourite? You see, we've gone on from cheeky biscuits, haven't we? I think we need a cheeky snack with it being Christmas. Something nice and festive. A bit of Christmas cake, maybe. Do you make your own Christmas cake? I bet a lot of you do. I must admit, I'd, I'd, luckily for me, Carl doesn't like it. Um, I do, but we don't have one because I'd probably eat too much of it. So um, anyway, I digress. You know what I'm like, going off on a tangent. So what we're going to do, as per normal, I'm using a six by six card blank. I'm just going to put that to one side. So my piece of card is five and a half inches by five and a half inches. Now, what that means is that my little piece of backing sheet... I just went for a coordinating coloured piece of card and this is five and three quarter inches, which still gives me enough for my six by six card blank. So I've got that ready. And what we'll do, we'll start with our stamping. So as always, I'll just get my, my copy of paper, and my magazine. Now, again, I know a lot of you are quite happy just stamping. Some of you have stamping mats. But you know what I always say? You know, when you come into crafting, you listen to lots of advice. But you know what? You just go with what suits you. At the end of the day, whatever gives you good results and what you enjoy doing, you know, we're not, us as tutors, we're not here to preach right and wrong to you. We're here to encourage you, to encourage you to make. And the main thing is enjoy yourself and have fun. So I'm going to use the Forest Temple. Now, this is quite a substantial stamp. Look, beautiful stamp. And again, what I did was, this is the tree decoration, how they come look. And I just put this on my acetate and I thought, yes. Maybe a wee bit big, but you know what? We've got a big wreath on this door. Hmm. So I had a look at my acetate and I thought, yeah, I can put that on and we can make it Christmassy. Won't need a lot else. And again, with this design, you could go as simple or I think I've added quite a lot to it. I've probably almost pizzaed it up for me. Now I'm going to use pine cone. So this is my VersaFine Claire ink pad. Now, I do encourage you to, I must admit, every time I put an order in with Tracy, when I order some new stamps or some more stencil brushes, I just pop myself a VersaFine Claire in my basket and I go for a colour I maybe haven't had before. And that way, bit by bit, I'm actually um, building up quite a lovely collection. And they are such useful um, ink pads. Obviously, you get that fine detail that Tracy draws in our lovely stamps. Now, I've just over-inked it a little bit, so I'm just going to get my damp cloth and just catch the edges. So, it's probably off camera, but you don't want to see me wiping. I'm just wiping round the edge of my stamp where I've just over-inked a bit. And again, me being me, I'm just going to stamp sideways just because I find it easier to do. I want that quite near the, the bottom. So we'll go for that there. And as I say, this is a, a sizable stamp. And I thought we'd go for brown for a change rather than black. So obviously do remember, we don't quite often we stamp in black, but it is nice sometimes to actually use a, a different colour. And we've got a lot of detail in the middle here with the raw tie-in. I'm just going to get that ink, just give it a, a second or two to soak in because as I say this stamp has got a great deal 
of detailing and there we go now i've got a tiny bit of ink there i'll be honest and show you look where obviously i over inked but don't worry we'll soon get rid of that nobody will see that in the end well, you probably wouldn't if I hadn't pointed it out. But if ever that happens, you know, you can always over stamp it. There are ways of getting round it. Now, what we're going to do next is bring in one of our pound stamps. And this one is called Mini Branch. And obviously, it's a nice little <laughs> mini branch. <laughs> and I'm just going to use the same coloured ink. And I just want to add a few more little branches coming out it's very similar to the branches at the top here i'm just sort of extending the design and i'm just going to turn my card round for me i just find it easier to turn my card than almost sort of turn my hand but like i always say you know you go with however you find it easiest And I'm trying not to make this too symmetrical. So I think I might have one in the middle there. Because I don't want it, I want it to look natural if possible. So if I turn it round, should we have one there? What do you think? Let's tell you what, let's go for it. I'm thinking just at the bottom, sort of coming out there. Yeah, that's nice. As I say, looks quite natural because it's not symmetrical. So I'm going to put my brown away and we're going to come in with our Shady Lady. It wouldn't be a Joe Rice YouTube if we didn't have a bit of Shady Lady. And we're going to bring in the Pound Holly. Now, again, <clears throat> I must admit, I lost my one of these. And <laughs> honestly, I felt like pff, I had to have another one straight away. And just to almost Christmassy this up, we're going to add some holly. And you can either put it coming out. Just check them in shot, can you see? And you can build up and use this as little or as much as you want. So I'm thinking, let's have one there. Just want to try and keep a nice shape. Just one there. And I think at the top we'll have one coming that way. Because I'm mindful I want to stamp some icicles at the top. I treated myself, it's a new stamp for me this year, the icicles. And I just want to use it again. And let's have a look this side, I think. One possibly there. And you know me, I'm almost that um, frustrated florist. <laughs> I like to pretend I'm just sort of doing a bit of flower arranging. Isn't it funny? I prefer this side to that. A bit strange. Right, maybe one there. Oh, misstamped that, but don't worry. It's because I didn't press down hard enough. We'll put a berry there. Again, not a problem. I just think I want a couple more and I'm thinking one there. Yeah, that balances that up and I seem to have a space here. So let's maybe have that there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, for our little berry, here we go. So... This is on the um, Berry Wreath set with Mini Berry. And as you know, I love this Mini Berry. And we're coming in with a bit of Chianti this time. Have certain set colours. There are some reds, but I don't know why I sort of always go towards the Chianti for the berries. But again, if you've got a nice red, um, you go for the, the colour that you like thinking there we're just going to fill in and add a few berries just dotted about here and there we have got berries on the holly which i'm going to color in but i just want a few other berries i love this color and it almost in these spaces adds a, a bit of substance and again i've just over stamped so we'll just 
wipe that off. Let's have one there. Probably making you dizzy the way I keep turning the card. So how are you getting on with your Christmas cards? I must admit I've done really well this year. Well, only because I've done sort of workshops and YouTubes with them um, making Christmas designs. So I've got quite a lot in my box. It's the most I've ever had. And again, I like to do that thing of having some that a batch card make. Now, remember where we did that little bit of misstamping? Like I say, that's not a problem because we'll put some berries there and nobody will ever know, look. Now, I think it just needs one more lot there. So, yeah, so how are you doing with yours? Like I say, I like to have just one more there. Yeah, I like that. So I like to have sort of the ones that a batch card make and then I have some that I make sort of more special cards. Now, we're going to go for the icicles next. And this is the icicles. And it's just going to almost frame just, just at the top here. And I know you'll think I'm a bit mad, but I'm going to use the pine cone again for this. just because I want to match it in with the, the brown. Now, I don't want it to come too far down, but I want my sides that bit longer. So I'm almost going to start further and then come up. Now, these are stalic tights, aren't they? Mites come up, I think, and the tights come down. Well, that's what we were taught so <laughs> always makes me giggle that so i think these are stalactites mind you probably better they're just called icicles <laughs> and again i'm just working my way across but altering the height because again i don't want it to look too uniform but i do want the ones at either side look to be longer just need a little bit let me just, just need that gap there. I don't like that gap there. Doesn't look right, that's better. That just fills that in. So I think that's my, my stamping done. So we'll just turn that over and blot it again. You're versifying Claire. It's a slower drying ink. So we need to just blot it. And I'm just going to put my heat tool over this. And I know that's a bit of belt and braces, but I just want to make sure that it is nice and dry before we add anything else. And what I'm going to do is come in. I've got some of my Element Sink pads now. Do you know what? There's just never enough room on my desk. I don't know about you, but I even try and tidy some space before we have our catch up, but I still never seem to have enough. Now I'm going to come in with some henna. And I just want to almost take the start whiteness off the card. So I'm going to put, I'm using my stencil brush. I just want a piece of copy of paper so I don't put my dirty hand on my work. As you know, I always, always, always use this. Although I dare say it, a cleaner piece of, cop of um, tissue would probably be better. Right, take this off. And I'm just going to come in and I'm using circular motions. And these brushes are so lovely for this. And I just want to take the whiteness off the card. So again, nice and light. So it's important to that ink, these Element ink pads are so juicy. But don't think you always have to add lots and lots of colour. So again, circular motions on my mat look. And then I'm coming in. And I'm just taking that whiteness. And the main thing with this is don't be heavy handed. So again, onto the mat. And these stencil brushes are just absolutely brilliant for this. And my tip is, again, circular motions look, but I'm going to start in the corner because I want my corner deeper. And I'm just going to come up to sort of the base of the trees. Maybe just over the bottom of the tree a little. Now, you could use your, your landscape mask for this, but we're actually going to add some snow on, so we wouldn't really see that. 
So we're just taking, if I just stand up, can I, can you see? It's very slight, but it has literally just taken, see the difference here and the, the, how stark white this is. And it's, it's a lovely way of just, um, as you know, me and Billy, Billy Breyer, sometimes we talk, sometimes we don't, don't. Um, and so for anybody who maybe isn't, particularly happy using Billy Brayer or um, for me this means I can do my stamping first and just bring a little bit of colour in with these brushes and as I say if you're one of those people that's a bit heavy-handed and to be honest you know who you are there are some of you just take it off on your mat make sure and it won't harm your brush just off on your mat and then nice light circular motions and for me, it just saves putting ink on my card first and then stamping. For me, I find I get a better result stamping first and then just adding a bit of ink. Right, so this side needs to darken up a bit. So I'll bring a bit more in, pick it up off my mat. There we go, just so they're a bit more even. And I'm happy with that. So I'll pop that brush back in my pot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick some of this ink up. We're going to paint with it. So we'll add a little bit more. So that was henna. But we're also going to use some Sahara. So we'll pop a bit of that on my mat. And we're going to use some paprika. You watch, I'm bound to put my uh, sleeve in that, aren't I? <laughs> and I've got my Lavinia stencil brush here. Now this one's number four. Because I'm not being particularly... Um, delicate with this I want the, the, the larger brush so this is a lovely lovely brush but quite um can you see am I still in shots you know what I'm like I'm liable to wander off and I'm just going to paint in the tree here and I'm not being overly careful I just want the idea of the tree And again, for me, this is a lovely way of just adding colour, taking the whiteness off. And again, although we're using tone on tone because it's the same colour we just added, we just want to, very loosely, I say we are going to add snow to this. So just a little bit of colour there. And then with the same colour, we'll add the base of our steps here. Now, again, you can take a lot longer than me doing this. I'm showing you the, <laughs> the quick version. But as I say, these brushes, I mean, look at the point of that. Absolutely beautiful. If anybody asks you if there's anything you want for Christmas and you haven't got these brushes, honestly, I can thoroughly recommend them. They make me feel like I can paint. <laughs> so next, I'm going to come in with a little bit of the Sahara, but I'm going to mix it. I don't want it too bright. So we'll just mix the colour there and we're just going to use these probably coping stones or something like that, are they called? I don't know. The stones around the door. <laughs> I just want to keep it similar sort of tone. But I just want it to be a little bit of contrast. And then what I'll do while I've got this colour on my brush, I'm just going to add some little bits so it's not all the same brown over here. Again, and that'll just add a bit more interest in the background. And again, just give my brush a quick, quick wash in my water pot. And then add some water and this is the Sahara. And we'll do inside. So we've got that lovely warm glow inside. I think there's a lovely warm fire going in there. And I think we're all going to go in and snuggle up by the fire and have a nice catch up. What do you think? 
and we'll just do the top of the steps there and again if you want you can add just some little yellow highlights and again I'm not being overly careful just so it gives me a bit of a nice contrast on that there and I'm happy with that that's given me the basis of my painting there just the icicles and I just need a little bit more of the Sahara Now again, you can use a fine paintbrush if you want. I'm just going to come in with this one. It has such a lovely point that I'm just going to very quickly. And again, you will take more time than this. But like I say, I'm going to add some snow to these. It's just again to take that starkness off. But I just want it all to match. It looks like a beautiful, cohesive, as Sir Tim would say, cohesive design. So I want to have the same colour tones. So I want to keep it all in the same colour family. And we'll get rid of that. I mean, again, if you've got a spare piece of card, you can smoosh your card in that and make yourself a spare background. But just for purposes of today, we'll clean it up with Mr Inky Binky. And we'll just do a very quick bit of a dry, just so that I can carry on really to the next stage. I mean, at home, you could just make yourself a nice drink or something if you haven't already got one. And what we're going to do now is I'm just going to add colour to these berries and I'm using my, my gel pen here. And this is the glaze one. So they will dry a little bit raised. And this is the bit where I might get my head in. So again, I just apologise. And this is also the bit where when I'm going round, I'm sure I miss some. And you'll be there shouting at me saying, Joel, you've missed that one. And for me, it's just always easier to move the card. And again, I'm leaning on my, my kitchen roll just to try and stop getting finger marks. Because how annoying is that? And I'm sure it happens to all of us. There we go. I just think I need a bit of... I know I haven't got any berries, but I'm just going to add some up here. That looks better. Just needed that. And that's starting to look, there's, apart from adding the snow, that's really starting to look. What I will do is with my white, now again, gel pen or Posca, you can just add some little highlights to those solid berries that we stamped. And for the snow, I'm going to add the snow. Now that's totally up to you. You can use your Posca pen to add the snow or you can use paint. I mean, that's all the stamping we're going to do. You could use a combination of Posca and it's totally up to you. I'm going to go for paint and this is just an acrylic paint, a white acrylic paint. And I'm just gonna put some on my mat. Now, there are various ways of putting this on. I have um, a paintbrush. I must admit, I don't use my Lavinia paintbrushes. I have just a regular paintbrush. And I'm adding a tiny bit of water. And I'm just going to start and just put where I think the snow would be. So at the base of the tree. And I'm just almost sort of dotting it on. Now, if you want to get, you can use the base of, if I show you a, a, another paintbrush look, and actually, if you want sort of more dots, you know, like snow does, you can sort of dot it in like this. But I must admit, for me, it just takes a little bit longer. So I'll stick with, with my paintbrush just to show you. So we're just going to have some snow along the bottom here, where we would have it sort of at the base of the tree and it just sort of goes in drifts sort of up the tree doesn't it and 
and again look at the uh, trace is giving you a lot of detail in this artwork so if we look look at the steps now the snow tends to collect in the corners again if ever you've, you've seen sort of snow as it drifts or if you look at steps it tends to collect like I say so we're just a little bit there but mainly in the corner and on here look it would just collect on those little edges and at the top here now again you can put as little or as much as you want so what I'll do is I'll just add we've got a little bit here and just catch the top it's one of those things you sort of don't want to overcook it. But to be honest, you know, you decide, have you had a flurry of snow or have we got a snow drift here? And I'm just catching the top of some of these berries, just the top of some of the holly. And just here where you see in the, the tree, where in the little crevices where the snow would just land. Oh, there we'd have some, wouldn't we? And just in a drift up the side there. And then I'm going to add some to my icicles. And again, so I'm just going to sort of come along the top and just down on some of them. Again, I don't want it to be too uniform because snow isn't like that, is it? wonder if we'll get any this year. We got quite a bit last year. We took the grandchildren sledging. Luckily, we had a, had a sledge. And yes, we've still got it at the side of the house, ready and waiting. Just going to wipe that up, because you know what will happen? That little bit there, I'll end up with that everywhere. And the only reason I tied you up as I'm going along is because I'll end up with it on the back of the card and it will get everywhere. Now, when it comes to the wreath, if I just show you, so these were just inexpensive um, little mini decorations to hang on the tree. And all I did was cut off the little strand, the one that holds it on the tree. And I've added um, some liquid pearls to make some little gems look. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this on now so that you can see how I just finished this off. And I'm just going to use um, a 3D glue gel. Because I just want to get a little bit of snow on this as well. So I'm going to pop that in the middle of the door there. And again, just pop my glue up and I can put that away. And then I just want to add a little bit on the bow, like the, like the snow's just caught on the top of that bow. And then I'm thinking a little bit more down here. It almost sinks a bit flat as it dries. So I just want to add a little bit more so I've got a little bit of depth. Then I'm going to add a little bit of water. And this is where, now again, you can either add, I will just want a few snow splats. Not too many. So you can either do this, you can use your Posca pen and a couple on the wreath look. Oh yeah, like that. So again, you decide whether you're having a, a full um, <laughs> snow blizzard or just a little flurry. And again, for me, I would do this on two or three cards at once. Because at least if they're next to each other, you'll find it's easier to do. And you'll get both of them at the same time. Now you can leave it like that, but just to finish it off and to make that snow look a little bit more like, you know, when we sort of get ice and snow, I'm going to come in with some stickles. And again, I'm just adding this along, more or less over the top of my paint. And it's just so I get that sort of... We've got the snow, but also this gives us the ice. And you know you get that sort of ice and on the snow when it sort of glistens. So we'll have a little bit on the icicles. And these are just the little finishing touches that, for me, make our cards. You know, we want people to look and go, oh, how have you got that effect? 
Maybe we'll just have a little bit down here. Don't want to overdo it. Just on this step. And we'll be careful if you come out of there. It's a bit slippy. And then what I'm going to do is leave that to dry. Now, if you want, you can. I might just, look, just put my... Yeah, that's better. <laughs> nice glittery finger now. So let's lift this up and just wipe under there again. So I'm hoping you like that design. Now, if you haven't got any of these, you can make your own. You don't even need, you could still make such a lovely Christmas design without. I just wanted to add a nice little embellishment. But you could certainly use the same design and make yourself a forest temple, nice Christmas store. What about maybe Pippin? Pippin could be sat looking inside. Again, so many possibilities. I mean, that's the beauty of these stamps. They really do tell a story to me. And it just goes from once I start creating. And look, if we just pop that on the little mat and layer, again, how it frames it and how the colours come together. So as always, I'll bring in the one I've already made. And we'll just open it up and slide this one in and see if we put the two next to each other. This is when I realise they probably look nothing alike. But I have told you before, I find it very difficult creating the same card twice. So there we go. Two more Christmas cards for my box. I shall mat, this, mat and layer this one up when it's dry and put it on a card blank. So I'm hoping you enjoyed that. I'm hoping you enjoyed spending some time together. Now, if you create this or something similar, please tag me in because I do love to see what you make. And it's always lovely to hear from you. The support and the friendship on this from the Lavinia family is just amazing. Honestly, it really is. So you take care, everybody. Join me again next week. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.